So here we are, the derby aftermath, the day after the derby, and this old girl got herself another piece of hardware. Third place in the windshield, and as you can see, she has nothing left to give, I would say. In fact, when you get to the rear end, you can see she is, uh, much like my Accord, a, uh, a half car, the Accord we ran earlier, and it was pressing so far in, it was getting to the point to where uh, it was becoming a safety concern. Uh, I knew for a while, the last couple minutes as we were getting down to the last couple, uh, I knew that my back end was getting so pressed in and you can see here the carnage. You can see how close uh, that rear axle, I'll show on the other side too, how it was pushed in. But the biggest concern, I mean, on, on top of that, that was the last shot I took to where I said, all right, I, I can't risk it anymore. I gotta. I gotta point the nose to him and try to send her as hard as I can to knock one of the two other guys out and go from there. But my fuel lines, you can see how, again, if you watch my build video, I had this all open and pressed back and it folded up and over to where you can see it's slightly pinching the fuel lines and the, uh, again, the foam spray, which again, absolutely did its work, uh, but it is to the point to where it's, it's about to rupture it. Uh, so, Pointed her to the uh, to the last two guys in the pit and uh, actually had a decent look at a guy's front wheel and I put her to the floor as hard as I could and hit hit her with my nose. And again, you know, the bumper is hanging on. Again, if you watch the uh, build video, I from the first run, the, the frame rails were not only folded back and up, but there was just next to nothing left to get a really any sort of a decent weld. So it was more of a just protect myself kind of bumper well I last two two hits were uh, with the nose and I sent her as hard as I could and I got a decent hit on him not a pure wheel shot but a decent wheel and kind of the front kind of corner of his kind of frame rails and that and she sputtered out after that and uh, wouldn't refire uh, ended third a good run as you can see she gave all she could um, this morning I uh, got back in and uh, had my battery hooked up turned the the key on to see what it was and sure enough what i'm pretty certain it is once we pop the hood where we'll figure it out uh, again all stock wiring still the only thing that was different was again if you watch the build video of this one i uh, have a background somewhere so we ran that uh, small line there that small wire right to the starter and spliced in and uh there she is so just touch it to the positive terminal with the key on and she fires up well, now when you turn the key on, the fuel cell, which again is the stock fuel cell in my derby tank, it is not priming. So I thought, end of the derby, uh, because originally I thought, because I went as hard as I could with my nose, I thought I either slammed it in to the pulley, which you can see might have scraped it a little bit there. But uh, no, there's still a tiny bit of space because the, the core and the frame rail were so beat up if I get it to focus. Uh, I thought maybe I pressed it too hard in on this side and I ended up driving it into the fuse box. But again, you can see space. However, I'm pretty certain I have a fuse popped because you turn the key on and nothing. The fuel cell isn't priming. Uh, again, that's the risk of running a uh, stock, you know, straight stock as I call it, uh, wiring and everything. But again, when, when the car has been run this long, it was a girl's second run and you can see the carnage. Uh, again, the loop lines did great, even whenever the core support was getting slammed up and the bumper was folding in on it, still was there. Again, have this guy pointing out because she was blowing hot steam at the end. You can see a little bit of damage to the, uh, I believe that's uh, not the transmission, but uh, well, part of it, I guess. That's where the fluid is and then the shifter. Yeah, I guess that's the front part of the transmission. Did a little damage. And again, my loop lines are still there right above my, again, my pressure piece. You need that if you're gonna loop the lines. You can see it's pressed back to the alternator too. But, oh, good run. Third place, two thirds. This girl has to her name. A great run at Venango, 30 minutes. I mean, we didn't get a lot of big hits as I show the wee carnage. And you can see how it was about, I don't know, three, maybe four inches from touching the seat. Uh, that was the one as it's ripping through the frame, just like my Accord. Um, I mean, they're all rusted, these vehicles, and uh, they get to a point to where, <laughs> and Crawford is where I rated at Crawford County Fair. It is a hard track, and it is fast, and you can see the carnage. They ended up splitting us up. Uh, I was fortunate, absolutely can say that. 
Uh, I was fortunate again to show it maybe was dragging a little bit, but it folded in, <clears throat> excuse me, well enough. And it was this shot here that really kind of took me off my wheels and was maybe dragging a little bit at the end whenever I was about out. Again, they laugh at me, they smile and grin at me and say, you're a fool. Free 99, as I call it, seat belts and duct tape. Same thing up front. I mean, again, nine wire obviously is stronger, but it's a lot harder to put on. <laughs> I cut myself all the time. And it's not free 99, as I say, with the car. But this one here I had just wrapped around the bumper to just kind of keep it there because my welds were bad in case it came off that it just, again, more defensive. Uh, but yeah, I always say, hey, laugh at me if you will, but they're free and... I mean, the duct tape isn't, but look at that. They don't get, they hold on just as good as the nine wire. So shout out to them. Inside shot of the door, it was folded out that outside sheet metal. Uh, but yeah, again, great run. Uh, as I was saying, they had, I believe it was 31 stock windshield classes, what Derby Dog calls it at the fair this year. And they usually just throw us in there, 25, 28, 30 odd cars. And it's just cars on top of each other. Well, this year they split us, which was good and bad. It was really good because you actually had some room to drive and maneuver. It was bad because I was like, oh, shoot, that was part of my strategy of this car. I knew was soft and I knew that if I was going to be taking big shots, it was going to be folding up uh, in the back is what I was wanting to point at everyone. And I was going to be in trouble. But it ended up really working in my favor because we were first in line. My son and I were there to record the afternoon show. And then there was the night show that we ran in. So we had the car already and just pulled it in the inspection line. So we were first in line for the night show as we were already there. And the first half that they split us up, just first half and second half, absolutely did not have as many well-built uh, very, I would say, top drivers, if not guys that just have a lot of experience and know what they're doing as the second one. And ours went, I think it was right around 15 or 16 minutes. Uh, the second one went just over 30 minutes. So uh, fortunate, ended up getting some hardware because of it, but had a lot of fun and a good run. So we'll pull our seat belts off the uh, bumper there and take a look at the carnage underneath before we wrap up. And sure enough, we have the culprits. And I say culprits for plural. This guy and this guy. Two main 20s are busted. These two blue ones here. They are busted. And I have no power going to my fuel cell. Or my fuel cell is not priming. And you know, as you can see, there's no damage to it. You know honestly what I think it is. And, you know, again, lesson learned. Uh, and I will say my first run, I didn't think it was a concern. But second run, I definitely thought about it again, but uh, just was like, you know, if I'm hitting that hard with the front, it's it's just not gonna work, but I'll show. And again, you can see, press back to the converter there. The carnage here just missed our loop lines. Again, worked great. Car didn't run too hot. Again, the fabric softener, I like April Fresh. Cup of it and uh, fill her up with water as much as possible and she works great. Over here, you can see we're not only pressed into the alternator, but also pressed into, oh yeah, that middle pulley. But she still, still could turn, although that belt would eventually rip. It looks like it was already pulling a little bit on it. But right inside the frame rail, see if I can get it right there it is. I don't know exactly what it is. I thought it might just be a ground and it has all sorts of wires that run into like almost like a small box. There's like four little wires run into it and then it's grounded. There's one on each side of the frame rails. And again, if you remember, if you saw the first run of this car, it same thing at the end, I was dragging and I had to hit with the front end, had a decent hit nose to nose, me and another guy. And she folded up similar to that. Same thing, I blew a fuse. It was just a 10 amp fuse, uh, which was the fuel to the motor. This time I blew 220 fuses on again, a hard hit where my nose, my frame rails got pressed back in and blew two fuses, no fuel to her. I say that though, and I'm thinking about it right now. I'm like, you know, yeah, but if it was in the first derby, that is the case. All I did was again, the outside of the frame rails, I tried to kind of bend them out and straighten them a little bit to where I could get a decent weld just to have a bumper on there. I did not touch any wires. So, I mean, I guess maybe it couldn't have been complete. And there were no wires cut. I, I looked, there was no wires cut inside the front here. 
Same thing on this frame rail. There were no wires, damage, cut, anything like that. That's why I didn't think that was something I'd need to move. But uh, regardless, she blew two fuses. But again, I mean, great run. Stuff like that happens. Uh, running stock again off the fuse, that's kind of part of the risk of it, especially whenever you uh, don't have much car left. So good to show the carnage back here. A lot of fun. Crawford County Fair, great show. A ton of cars. Drivers were putting on show the whole day. Uh, just great show. Big hits, good runs, excellent builds. Uh, just a great show. So had some fun with her. Hyundai Elantra 2006. Again, I think they're tough little cars. Uh, the wheels, I took a little shot or two uh, on the front, and you can see the front right. Uh, just got in a kind of a pinch, uh, a pincher, a pincer move, if you will. I was going to hit somebody, and somebody else I knew was going to have some sort of a hit on me, and he got a little bit of my wheel turned just a little bit in. The strut didn't bend to break, but right at the bottom there, it's kind of hard to see with the light. There's a little bit of like a bend to her. She was starting to whine and take some pain but uh, again tough car two third places good time